Hi everyone, Paul ISM, welcome to the Inbox Review. Today we're going to be looking inside the Platt BMW M6 GT3. Okay, so there you go, as I said, we're going to be looking inside the Platt BMW M6 GT3. Uh, this was sent to me by Frey at www.modelemporium.shop. So thank you very much for the uh, review sample, Frey. Uh, it just sent the detail upset as well. And I've got an SK decals to look at um, because I plan to build this straight away after this review ends. Um, and we'll come back next week at the Telford in an Bench update and I'll talk about the actual build itself. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, Great looking car out the box. The, the box scheme is fantastic. Um, there's plenty of other aftermarket schemes out there as well. Um, so I've got a few of these now. I'll probably end up getting a few more as well in the future. Um, it looks a very interesting car. And I'm interested to see how the kit builds up. Um, Platt, I don't think they're particularly new. But I think they've only made a handful of cars. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what this kit's like. And um, yeah, let's... Uh, Let's have a look through the box. So, without further ado, let's go on through the box, have a look at the detail upset, and have a look at those decals too. Right, here we go. We've got the new, new Platt BMW M6 GT3. Uh, very nice looking kit. A mixed report about how it builds up, but I'll find that myself, because uh, as soon as this review is done, I will be building it myself. Uh, also, to go with this, I've got the detail upset. As well, these are very kindly sent to me by Frey at www.modelemporium.shop uh, for review. And like I say, I'm going to build them and uh, let's see what we can get out of the kit. So I'll look for the detail of set later on. I've also got an aftermarket set of decals from Frankie SK decals. Uh, this is the full carbon wrap, uh, which is going to be interesting to do. Uh, and at some point later down the line, I'll do the out of the box scheme as well. So Nice box art, um, it really is a good looking car, as you can see, in that row um, library, it really is nice. Uh, a couple of pictures on the side of the built-up model, and again, very striking looking car. Some Japanese there, which you can't understand. Colours are there as well, so we've got Mr. Colour from Mr. Hobby, and Mr. Hobby Aqueous as well, or Aqueous if you're great. Ah, that's it. So, inside, let's have a look what we've got. So... We've got wheels, tyres, grill, chrome work, running gear, the shell, interior, glass work, chassis, decals and instructions. So we'll pop all these over to one side for now. And we'll go through the kit as we always do. So I think we'll start with the body shell. Now I've had a quick look through the kit, we really had a close look. Um, so I've no idea what we've got. We've got some rustly bags, unfortunately, just by the nature of the type of bags. Just those stick together ones, which for some reason really don't want to come apart. There we go. So, first impressions, it looks good. Uh, we've got some rather hefty uh, sprue gates to cut off there, but it's not much of a drama. I'm going to come in a little bit for you. Um, the front and rear bumpers are slide molded separately, uh, which while they need gluing on, um, negates the need for any seam removal, as you get on a typical Tamiya kit. And for the most part, the body looks nice and clean. Um, there's a wisp of flash here and there. Yeah, there's a seam under like the wheel arch is going to need removing things like that. That's pretty standard for kits to have seams that need removing. A little bit of flash on underneath, but it's literally... You can take it off with your thumb, and that's it there. So nothing really all that bad. All in all, it looks pretty clean. The details go down, the plastics, not too bad at all. Reminiscent of uh, Bell Kits plastic. Can't see any real sink marks or any problems there. So I don't think it's going to give us any real problems. Uh, the detail is a little bit soft in places, but um, Platts, I think it's one of their first cars they produced this, so... You can kind of forgive them for that in a way. Um, but it looks to be a nice body shell. Like I said, a little bit of clean up here and there. Um, but it's not going to be much of a drama. The one thing I'm hearing about, I think, is these rear ducts at the back. Uh, or somewhere one of them needs filling in. And I believe it's a bit tricky to do. But, well, that's just the nature of what it is. Uh, quite often, those kind of parts do need filling in. Right, let's start with the, uh, the bumpers. 
roll cage. My God, these are crinkly, rusty bags. Sorry for the noise. So in there, we've got the front rear bumpers, as you can see at the top. And again, a little bit of clean up. Glue those in place. You've got the roll cage. I'm going to zoom back out a tad. We've got the roll cage, the interior tub, what looks to be some ducks that need gluing in place. Not sure where they go. And there too. And yeah, it looks good. The door cards there. The detail's pretty good. There's a bit of flash here and there. I'm not going to lie. A bit of flash around the roll cage here. And there, but it's easy removal. There's always a scene to remove anyway, so you always have to run a sander through there. Uh, but it would be nice not to see the flash, but it looks as though it's going to be a part of this kit. There's been a flash on the front bumpers around the top. Again, it's going to be a bit of removal. But other than the flash, it doesn't look too bad. It's not badly moulded. The detail is pretty crisp. It's a bit more defined on the front bumper than the body. The roll cage looks good. Door cards got nice texture to them. Like I say, you got those ducks there and the rest of the roll cage and the interior tub as well. We've got like ECUs in there and things like that. So a nice bit of interior detail. There's wiring uh, detail in there too. That's quite nice. Quite a nice little detail. If I bring it up, you can see it. Yeah, quite a nice bit of wiring detail in there. That's pretty cool. Not bad at all. Right, onto the chassis. Now, typical of this type of car, it's a flat chassis. So, not sort of a lot to look at underneath. So, we've got the chassis plate itself. Again, some rather big ejector moulds to remove, but they just need snipping off. Details quite good. There's not a lot of detail on it, but for what there is, it's not bad at all. Let me move on to... What look like intercoolers, radiators, the rear spoiler, part of the dashboard, the BMW kidney grills, the seat, window wipers, more parts of the chassis that go there for the uh, look at the front steering. We've got the brake discs, quite nice detail on the brake discs. Let me get to focus. There we are, not too bad at all. The seat's not bad, everything's going to need a bit of a clean up, it, it is one of those things. It's not a Tamiya moulded kit. Um, it's a little bit rough around the edges, but I don't think there's any other M6 GT3 out there. So you've not got all that much choice. And I'll be honest, it just needs a little bit of cleanup. And I think you'll be all good to go. Uh, I've seen better, I've seen worse. It's not a really expensive kit either. I think the kit itself is about, um, is it 35, 40 pounds? A detail upset about 30 pounds, 35 pounds. Um, I think Frey sells this as a combo at $69.99. So you get a lot in the detail set. That's where a lot of the cost comes from. Um, whether it's worth adding, we shall see in a little bit. But apart from the flash, these parts don't look too bad. It's pretty well defined. There's quite nice detail, like on the steering wheel. Shows all the buttons and whatnot. Um... The intercooler radiator, I assume they are. Again, nice detail. They're going to hold a wash well. Uh, the kidney grills at the front. Again, nicely de uh, defined. And yeah, not too bad at all. Not too bad. Right, suspension and steering hubs and what have you. So, are we using a typical, yes we are, polycap hub like Tamiya does? We are indeed. So, on there we've got drivetrain. So, we've got the rear differential. Drive shafts. There's no prop shaft, but I guess that we don't really need to see it inside the car. Uh, we've got wing mirrors, steering column, uh, the steering rod, the axle uh, hubs are there as well. That the poly caps fit in, and your brake discs go on top. Exhaust tips, by the look of it, and our accelerator pedals. Again, the detail is a little bit soft in places. I bring it off here to have a look. It's a little bit soft in places, but it is there. Everything's going to hold a wash well. It's not too bad at all. Like I said, I do plan to build this, so we'll come back in a bench update after Telford, and I'll discuss the build and see how that went. 
But yeah, it's not too bad. Like I say, it's just a bit flashy is the word I'm looking for. But it's not masses of flash. It's it's in places you would have to clean off. Every Tammy kit, every B Max kit have built the seams on every half of every part. And you just gotta sand it off or run a knife down to get rid of it. And it's just flash there, that's it, that's all it is. So it's a part that's gonna need sanding anyway. Uh that just needs a little bit more sanding. <laughs> I'm not making excuses for it. There shouldn't be flash this day and age, but sadly there is. Um, but it still looks to be a decent kit. The detail's nice. Springs aren't too bad. So yeah, not too bad. A little bit flashy. I think that's going to be the uh, the key to this kit. As long as it builds up well, I can deal with a little bit of flash. Wheels. They look quite nice. So you've got your typical polycap arrangements on the back. So the studs are fitting the polycaps and the wheels themselves. They're nicely detailed. They've got really nice painted up. Yeah, no real problem with those. The centre hubs are there. All depicted. Wheels are nice and clean, actually. Pretty cool. Now, nice wheels as well. Very, very nice rims. Not sure what rims they are. They are very, very nice. So, yeah, spot on for those. We've got chrome parts. Get to the clear parts last. Let's have a look at all our chrome parts. These will be the light reflectors, mirror inserts, I assume. And yeah, not too bad. The chrome, more than adequate for, for our lights. As you can see, they are there. So we've got, um, let's see what we've got. Hard to tell. Front and rear light reflectors. Wing mirrors. And I'm guessing they're also light reflectors too. So yeah, not too bad there. At all, if you look at the Wing mirrors, you see, yeah, the shine's good. More than adequate for showing wing mirrors. Quite nice quality chrome, actually, to be fair. Right, clear parts. I do apologise for the sniffing, I'm still getting over man flu. I do apologise for the rustling as well. I know a lot of people say, why didn't you debag the sprues before, but I kind of like going into the kits blind. I've not really looked at this. I don't want to break it all open and start having a good look through because I kind of like to have a look through myself. Right, the clear parts. They're really good, actually. Nice and clear. No marks, no scratches. Yeah, the clear parts are very good. Quite a few cleanup points on each window, unfortunately, um, but very easy to clean up. Not too bad at all. But it looks like this is all going to go on the exterior. And I believe this is where a bit of one of the fit issues is. This, these side windows need a bit of trimming to fit in. Uh, like I say, we'll come back when I've built it and I'll discuss all the good and bad points. But for the most part, yeah, the, the glass looks really good. The lights are all well defined. No real distortion, but the actual clear parts, the clear glass, is very good. Really good, actually. So yeah, no problems there. Fantastic. And then we've got our tyres and polycaps and our grills. Right, so our tyres are there. There's no centre seam, which is always good. As you can see, not too bad at all. So we've got two fronts, two rears. So they're not bad at all. Really good. Always good not to have a centre seam. We got our cloth mesh to simulate all the grills. Shouldn't need that if we're using the PE set. And our polycap arrangement. Five polycaps, one spare, which is always good. And they're for our hubs and wheels. So again, spot on, no bother there at all. I'm gonna pop this back in the bag so I don't lose any of this. After just having to go rooting through the bin to find a part we throw for my Mercedes and building at the minute. I think I'll keep those nice and safe in the bag. Right, decals, let's have a look. Or decals or stickers for those that like to be offended. These bags certainly do see a while, I'll give them that. So, two sets of decals. Which look pretty good. Let's have a look. 
Not sure who manufactures these, as they say on the box. I didn't notice it anywhere. Just have a quick look. Can't see any mention of a manufacturer on the box. If there is, I'll amend it and pop it up on screen. So, like I said, the, the standard scheme is pretty striking. Uh, nice yellow stripes. We're getting all the black work for the windows as decals. Whether I do that or mask it off and paint them, I don't know. There is no window mask, so if you are going to do that, you have to do it on your own bat. I have got an aftermarket set, though, which I've just thought of. Um, there is aftermarket set out there, and I have one in my drawer somewhere. But those decals don't look bad. They're not thick. They look pretty nice, nice and satin. I don't think there'll be too much issue at all. They're, that's a really nice decal set. Definitely do plan to do the standard scheme at some point, because it is a good looking scheme. Onto the smaller decal sheet. Again, they look pretty good. All the BMW logos are there, the BMW propeller, the M6, M6 GT3. We've got some seat belts there as well, should you wish to put those in. And yeah, the decals look really good. They're actually rather nice quality. Very nice. And last part of the kit is our instructions. Not the hanging around on this one because we've got quite a bit to get through. Uh, we're going to go for the detail set next. So that'll be, oh, fold out decals, come on. We don't need these anymore, they're annoying. Right, so we've got our colour list there. If you want to have a look at that, you can pause it. So there in Mr. Colour. Uh, Mr. Aquis or Aquis. There, so I've got the legends down below. And we start off with assembly of the chassis. So, instructions look nice and clear. They're not too busy. Everything looks pretty well defined. It looks pretty clear where everything goes. We have got exhaust tips for those exhausts. That's good because they weren't drilled out, but it must have those. It must have missed those on the sprue. And yeah, it's quite clear. We've got the colour call out. If there's no glue needed, uh, attention required, caution, part. So yeah, nice instructions. Pretty good. I don't like fold out ones though, they're a pain. Uh, page two. So we deal with the front running gear on page one. Uh, radiator into cooler, onto the rear part of the running gear. Then we're onto the interior. And again, yeah, the instructions are nice and clear. Anything that's painted is pretty clear to see. Uh, any decals are shown. Yeah, that's good. Now, what I would like to see, the BMAX do, is a separate part for their aftermarket parts. So I'm assuming we're gonna get a separate decal sheet, but I would like to have seen it in here. So if you've got like a standard part, like this seat, you've got aftermarket seat belts, it'll give you that little exploded diagram next to it telling you, so you don't miss out. It's all too easy to miss parts. I've been there and done it. So it would have been nice to see. Uh, we've got the roll cage assembly, dashboard assembly. Ah, that's the lower part of the dash, that bit. Okay, I wonder what that was. Uh, installing that in. Okay, all pretty straightforward. The door cards, getting the cockpit in. Then we're on to getting the rear suspension on, the brake discs, getting the wheels and tyres on, and then assembling our body. I do this back to front, I can do all the body first, so I can get that sprayed up and ready. Got the inserts for the spotlights at the bottom, that's where they're for. Get a little bit of masking up of the front window, nothing too technical at all. And then we've got the window installation. So like I said, just be aware of these. That's one of the tricky parts, as is these rear, um, I'm assuming it's these, these little vents at the back. That's good. We've got our mesh cut out there as well. It is real scale, as Tamiya does. So you can cut that out and trim the mesh accordingly. Got the light install. Yeah, front and rear, getting the rear wing on, getting the body onto the car itself. And then our decal cool off the back again, nice and clear. So no real dramas there. And then our sprue layout on the back. So yeah, not bad instructions, can't fault the instructions really at all. They're nice and clear. And there's a little bit of info on the car there if you want to read. I normally do that, I didn't see that. There you go. And there we are. So there's the kit gone through. So I'm just going to pop all these bits to one side and we'll have a look through the detail upset. And I've not looked through this at all. 
all the parts included on the back. So we've got uh, photo etch, three sheets of carbon, seat belts, antenna, and the connector valve for the air suspension. So let's have a little look and see what we've got in here. Something I want to have a look in, but never had a chance yet. So let's see what we get. So let's get our ribbon out for our seat belts. And that is it. So in there, we've got a length of ribbon. They are for our seat belts. If you watch my Subaru Techniques guide, you see me making these. Brilliant, no bother at all. We've got our antenna for the roof. I'm not going to take it out because it will probably get lost. And the connector valve for the uh, suspension. So again, another nice little addition because the antennas do look really good. You can always stretch sprue, but I always think these look better. We've got a nice P set. Oh, let's have a look. So what have we got in there? We've got brake discs, grills, like I said, the seat belts. So we've got front um, intercooler radiator covers for those parts I showed earlier. So they're going to look even better. Uh, we've got the uh, body panel pulls, window wipers, so on and so forth. So again, nice, the front grill. So you're not going to have to cut out um, the uh, mesh in the kit if you've got this set. So it's a very nice set. Bring it up here to have a look. There you go, plenty of PE on there. You don't need to use it all if you don't want to. Find some of it too intimidating. But a lot of it is worthy additions. Very nice, very, very nice. And so we've got the ribbon as well for our seatbelts included on there. And then we've got some carbon. So I'm assuming the carbon's for the interior. Wow. And the underneath. So there's a few sets of it there. Looks pretty detailed carbon. Quite a nice weave on it. I'll bring it up to you to have a look. So they're all pre-cut. I assume they're all going to be marked out in the instructions. So that should make life a little bit easier. I'll bring it up for you to have a look. And there you go, there's the carbon weave. Not too bad. Oh, we've got a little bit of marring on the decal, but you won't see that once it goes down. And again, with all that pre-cut, I'm going to have a look through the instructions and see what this says. So, <laughs> yes, all that carbon, plenty of it there to go around there. You can see all those call-outs there. You focus, there we go. Yep, that's going to keep you busy. Around the front, around the front splitter, and then we're moving on to the brake discs, uh, radiator into cooler, assembling your seat belts. Uh, we've got ties for the fire extinguisher, etc. The netting for the roll cage, that's quite good. Brake discs and parts for the grill as well. Moving on to the back page, we've got the front and rear bumpers, applying some carbon to the intakes. Window wipers, uh, carbon surround for the window, the grills on the side, our connector valve, and parts for our spoiler as well. Huh, okay, so the upright mounts for the spoiler and our PE as well, and our antenna. So it looks like a pretty decent detail upset. There's plenty in there. Um, the carbon alone is going to keep you busy for a while. Um, so yeah, that's going to be interesting. Plenty in there. Uh, whether it's a worthy addition, we shall see. I think it will be. I think the carbon's going to require a lot. And it'll save you cutting all that lot out, which is going to take you a while. Um, <laughs> so, a nice touch. Right, let's grab those SKD cars and have a quick look at those. Right, so Frankie sent me a message. I bought a few decals off Frankie at SKD cars. You can find them on Facebook. I'll put a link in the description below, as I will for Model Emporium Shop. Frankie makes decals, only makes a a select range so far. I've got a couple of sets off him, uh, one set off him for the M6 already, um, and he's just started to make these and asked me would I like to test them, hence why the car's getting built. Um, and I thought he meant interior carbon, like you get with the uh, detail upset. I thought, oh, okay, no bother at all. It turned up and it's a full carbon wrap, and I was like, oh, okay then, that's going to be interesting. Um, so yeah, it's going to be quite a technical decal scheme. If I whip it all out, I have looked at this in awe and total terror so there's the car i'll put a picture of the car up on screen so this is what the car looks like there's not a lot of pictures of it uh, that's probably the best one i can find but it does look pretty amazing so there's all the decal placements on the back 
So it really is going to be interesting to do. And we've got one, two, three large carbon sets and a marking set as well. Now I've used these before, SKs, and they go down well. Um, I'm hoping these will go down well. <laughs> if not, we shall see. Um, but they're all pre-cut for the body. Uh, we've got the spoiler as well. I'm assuming these are spare parts as well. I don't really know. I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. Um, I don't know. It's just for the body. Yeah, it's just for the body. So, yes, there's plenty of bits to keep me uh, entertained. And this is going to be a fun decaling session. If I can, I'll film it. Uh, the decaling session, and we'll show it in my next bedroom date after Telford. Um, hopefully it'll go well. <laughs> if not, well, we'll play that by ear and see how that goes. But that's it, basically. So, quite an epic scheme. Um, there's a few available for the M6. Frankie's got a couple. Go to s.k.decals on Facebook. I'll put the link in the description. Go look at Frankie's site and you'll see some of his decals. They're beautiful. And um, obviously go to www model important dot shop as well for fray shop for very kindly um supplying this kit for review so there we go right so there we go a good look through all that i tried to be as quick as possible so we didn't flounder around too much but quite a lot to get through so the kit itself right a little bit of flash here and there and soft detail in places soft detail in places it's going to come with the territory with smaller companies that don't mass produce. Now, it does have the BMAX name on the front of the box, but it says that's for the license. But the box does look very BMAX-ish. So whether they've got something to do with BMAX, I don't know. There's a little bit of soft detail here and there, which at the end of the day isn't the end of the world. It's still there, and it's still prominent enough to hold a wash and show the detail itself. The flash, I'm not a fan of flash, especially on new kits. It shouldn't really be there, um, but it is. And in the case of this one, it's not that it's really worn machine and it's done it. It's just a machine in itself. The flash that's present is in areas that will need sanding anyway. Um, like I say, the parts, uh, every part on Tamiya kits, any kit I've built on running gear, on the drive shafts, prop shafts, anything that's cylindrical or, a, you know, it, it's got a seam through it that you need to remove. And it's just there. So it's just going to be a little bit more sanding than normal to remove it. So would I say it's a floor? It kind of is, but it isn't. Is it detrimental to the kit? I don't think it will be. Uh, I think it's going to need a little bit more work. Um, I don't mean a lot either. Um, it's just one of those things. I'm not a fan of Flash, but it is there. But it's a great looking car. And if the kit fits together well, well, we'll forgive that, won't we? Um, we shall see. But like I say, I'll be back next week. Uh, I'm not sure when, because I've got Telford coming up this weekend. It's a mega busy week this week. Um, but as soon as I've got some progress on it, I will come back and report on how it's going. And when I get to the SK decals, which look absolutely terrifying, uh, I'll try and film it and we'll do a sped up video of it and we'll see how those went down. Uh, and it's probably going to need a semi-gloss coat, this one. So I'm probably going to end up having to get some semi-gloss uh, satin 2K for this one. But I think I want to get the decals down first and see how they look. Because the car, the picture showed before we look at it, it's got a satin sheen to it. It's not matte. It looks satin. And I'm hoping the decals will give that themselves. But we'll see. But I guess it wouldn't harm to protect them anyway. So I probably will end up getting a satin 2K anyway. And there we are. So yeah, overall, yeah, quite like the kit. It looked pretty good. Uh, the detail of that looks excellent. The amount of carbon in there to fully detail up the underneath. I know you're going to see it, but it's a bit of practice. Uh, you know it's there. And you will see some of it from the diffusers at the back. Uh, the front splitter at the front. So it's worth doing. The kit decals themselves look really good as well. Uh, the rest of the um, detail upset. It looks good. Got the antenna, you've got the um, connector rods for the air suspension. Uh, the seat belts, always a worthy addition. Look 10 times better than uh, decals. Um, and the PE as well. Like I say, you don't have to use all the PE if you're a little bit intimidated. Pick some of the easier bits to use. Uh, maybe save some for your next build if you build another one of the kit. Um, PE is one of those things, you don't have to use it all. I tend to not use every single piece. Uh, use what's prominent or you think needs replacing and have a look. And SK decals as well, they look great, a little bit terrifying and daunting, but we'll see. And if I can pull it off, um, it'll look good, I think. So, again, we'll see that next week, indeed. So, thank you very much to Frey at Model Emporium, and thank you to Frankie at SK decals for supplying the review samples. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that review and I didn't waffle on too long. As always, check out the National Scale Model Facebook page and forum, uh, umpretail.com as well. 
I've got my Paul ISM Facebook page, Paul ISM Instagram group. There's also a hashtag, International Scout Modeler Instagram group now as well. Uh, we've got the Modern Hangout group, the Off Air Hangouts, and the Live at the Bench um, show uh, group as well. And if you don't know by now, I'm also auctioning off that Subaru right there that I did for my Subaru builds. Um, it starts tonight, Monday night, uh, which is the 5th of November. Remember, remember the 5th of November, Bonfire Night in the UK. Uh, over on the Models for Heroes eBay page. I'll post the links up everywhere when it's up tonight. Uh, and go and bid. All the proceeds go to Models for Heroes. I always have to support charity. So go on there and support that too. So there we go. So thanks for watching today. Take care. Bye-bye.